Okay. Thanks for coming, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is a special meeting of the Pioneer Valley Regional School District School Committee. Uh, just a reminder to all that this meeting is being recorded by Burnison Northfield Community Television for future broadcast on your local cable channel. This meeting may also be streamed live on their Facebook page when able. It is a few minutes after 6 on March 6th. And <clears throat> our main goal tonight is to vote our budget. So are there any citizens' comments? Lois? I have two things I want to comment on. One is that frequently uh, some of the administration here refers to the position that the Finance Committee for the four towns have taken. It's the position of the Finance Committee and the select boards together. And this uh, has been in the paper long as well. So it's Finance Committees and the select boards of the four towns that have had these meetings and set their position. The other thing I want to comment on is I'm getting calls like never before and comments about your vote on the superintendent's salary and contract, questioning whether that is appropriate at this time and whether it, you haven't done anything for your credibility, really. You've given a five-year contract. Um, you compare this to municipalities. We have never given 5% raises. Never. And, and so people are talking about the fact that we're trying to be believable. You are trying to be believable in what you're doing with the budgets and so forth. And then something like that comes out and you just destroy it. Anybody else? Okay, let's get started. <coughs> so, um, the vote on the FY20 budget is next. <coughs> so can I just <coughs> make a comment that the school committee um, needs to vote each one of these lines separately. Mm -hmm. So just a reminder mm -hmm. about that. Okay. All right, so we all have um, a revenue and a uh, expense summary. That's the one that has the 14272210 at the top. So Tanya, you're saying that each assessment, I mean each no. line of revenue and each just, line just of- Just the expenditures. Okay, just the expenses. Yep. Okay. <coughs> So um, if people have a different process they want to use, I'm just going to start at the top and I'm going to read each category and the amount. And my thought was I would uh, call the vote, like make a motion to approve, and then we can discuss, and then we can vote. Does that sound appropriate? Yeah? Okay. All right. So the first category is athletics. And the uh, FY20 recommended number is $191,694. Do I have a motion for that category? So moved. Do I have a second? second. Okay. <clears throat> Discussion? Can we, just, excuse me, can we just have a quick recap of the difference between the 19 budget and the 20 budget on that one? Okay, we did just do that very recently. Yep. We moved the <coughs> coaches and the stipend for the athletic director over to its appropriate category. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor of $191,694 in the athletics budget for FY20, please raise your hands for aye. I don't think I can vote. Okay. No. 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 And just let me know when you've got everybody. You're good? Okay. Um, any votes opposed to that budget? And one abstention. Right? Okay. All right. That's athletics. I'm going to go on to central office. 
Hi, Jeannie. So Jeannie, on page two of your packet is the FY20 budget, Thank you. revenue and expenditures. We're just going through each of the 16 expenditure lines. We just did athletics, and that's all. So that's all you missed. Okay, so the central office line for FY20 is budgeted at 733,000. Nope. Wrong no. column. No. Oh, the sorry. admin recommended is the column we're using. Okay. Sorry. The, um, is budgeted for $697,852. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. Tony, you want a, you want a quick recap of each line, right, Robin? I, I think it would be good to have it on the record. So um, in particular, we added a curriculum coordinator slash grant writer to this particular line. We decreased the overseers pay by 20,000 and that is basically your net difference in the central office line. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah. Sar Sharon did so moved and who seconded? Mike, Mike, Mike seconded. Okay. <coughs> okay. All those in favor of that number for that line item, please raise your hand. Opposed? Okay, going on to elementary administration. Uh, <clears throat> this line for FY20 is budgeted at $293,301. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Do you want to briefly? Yeah. Um, the main reason for the um, decrease in this particular line is that we are moving to a stipend format for the principal at Warwick Community School, similar to that at Pearl Roads. Okay. All those in favor of that number for this line? Okay. Opposed? Okay, elementary instructional assistance. <coughs> this line is budgeted at $182,675 for FY20. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion. So the change in this particular line um, are increases due to contractual obligations offset by decreases in elementary instructional assistance across the elementary schools in the district. Okay, discussion? Jeannie. Question, mm -hmm. um, are the elementary instructional assistance decreased evenly between the schools? I know a lot depends on what the needs of the students are, but I'm, I'm looking at primarily at Burdenston. I want to make sure that Burdenston isn't shorted the number of instructional assistants they require to educate the students in that town. So the elementary instructional assistance is specifically classroom aids. The one-on-ones are in the SPED budget. So they, it was dependent on student needs and requirements for the students. And that was discussed with the special ed director as well as the administrators. Okay, I'm not talking the special ed students, I'm talking instruction, classroom instructional <coughs> assistance, not SPED. And that's what we're talking about, elementary instructional assistance, not the SPED. John, did you? Robin, did you want to? I, I was just, I, I'm <coughs> sure that John had this discussion with the administrators and he could speak to that. Right, I, I don't have a specific list breakdown with me tonight, but I did at the last 
several meetings, but this was in discussion with the administrators, um, the special ed director looking at classrooms and what was required and needed in all, all of the schools. And I only have the summaries as a whole for the instructional assistance, not, not breakdown by schools. Term. Well, I have it by school, but the SPED and the, the regular instructional assistance are not together. Why is it? In my summary. Um, I can find it for you if you give me okay. just a second. I don't have the, power, the PowerPoint from the meeting that we just had. Because <coughs> I, I believe I've had several communications from Burnett that they were, they have been drastically cut in classroom yeah. instructional assistance. Well, I, have in the I have it in the PowerPoint. I just don't have the PowerPoint with me. I apologize. So, <coughs> so that's my concern that there was um, too many cuts made. For Bernardston, it just doesn't leave any leeway. Bernardston also had more instructional assistance at the school than Northfield did to begin with. Yes, Northfield, Bernardston also has larger classes. Well, I think Northfield has a couple of large classes too. Yeah. <coughs> We didn't just slash instructional assistance. I mean, John worked through this process. No, with I'm the but you can't split. I'm just concerned that the cut is is too much to bend that it's going to be detrimental to the students so the reduction of classroom assistance specifically was two full-time equivalent classroom instructional assistants at Bernison one of whom is retiring and not being replaced and Warwick was 0.6 and those were just classroom assistants and that added up to the fifty thousand dollar is in admin changes so so the cuts at Northfield and Pearl Roads were specifically special ed instructional assistance, which are in the SPED budget. They're different sections. <coughs> I know, but I wasn't talking about SPED as I keep repeating myself. I just, this is the, I know, different. I know, and I'm looking, so, so, by what you're showing me here, it looks like there's no cuts at Northfield. Not in classroom instructional assistance specifically. Okay, I'm just, that's what I'm just, I'm just bringing up the point that there seems to be an overabundance of cuts of instructional assistance for the Bernardston Elementary School. Jess, Sorry, Robin. do we have guidelines about class size and how many? teachers to instructional assistants we need to have in different classrooms of different sizes taking into consideration populations of kids who are in those classes certainly we have to have information come from the teachers who are in there and the principals we looked at all the uh, <coughs> the classroom sizes we went actually teacher by teacher student by student and class by class and I said at the public hearing is this ideal no but we have to do what's required whether special ed services or or classroom assistance and so we made these cuts you know very carefully and with thought and so is it ideal no but uh, we're looking at what's required and what we need to do as a district and this is what this is what we have Sharon uh, it sounded like Jeannie had something in mind Jeannie did you have something in mind well I've received emails about um, there being too many cuts on instructional <coughs> classroom instructional assistance in Bernardston for this that event that will that is detrimental to the learning for the students and that concerns me. I have. A, if we want to go back to that, I have a list of the teachers and aides that are in each classroom. Mm -hmm. No, I just, I just feel that there's an imbalance here. <coughs> Mike. Do I got to push this thing to talk? No, just pull it. Pull. So, classroom sizes, uh, I looked into this uh, back in the fall, and there is no requirements in the classrooms except, I believe, for uh, pre-K and I think kindergarten. 
So with the amount of uh, students per adult, I believe the average is 5.2 kids right now in our system. And I think that's what we're trying to uh, cut back on. Uh, we've had numerous, I've had numerous calls and emails regarding uh, just how many cars in the parking lots at both Northfield and Berniston uh, regarding how much staff there is. Now, I know John uh, did speak with uh, the special ed director and the admin in each of those schools and made numerous phone calls to get to where they are numbers uh, wise uh, what we uh, plan to budget on. Um, <coughs> so in all reality if you had uh, seven classes say at Berniston which you know from kindergarten up to sixth grade <coughs> if you had a teacher and an aide in each classroom that's 14 people we have 14 aides alone now if you have the 14 uh, teacher you know the teachers and uh, aides total 14 and then you have the special needs kids with medical disabilities you add those to it you still should be below the total of the 14 uh, total of aids and that's what we're we're trying to balance out what is needed um, to what we have now uh, which is it seems like an excess and a lot of people are commenting on that I know a lot of the people here might not see it that way but there is other people out there that are sending emails and calling in regards to the overstaffing so I, I give John credit for not cutting any teaching positions or programs to get to where we are budget-wise uh, yeah it'd be nice to have uh, four to one student ratio five to two student ratio be it in all reality it's it's impossible we're gonna go bankrupt if we continue on down that path <coughs> okay, so I just have to say something about it just because I'm a practitioner. Um, it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the number of children in a room, how much support a classroom needs. It really does not. So what I am trusting has happened is that administrators and teachers and, and people that created this budget have had discussions and and talked about the needs and um, made sure that the program is indeed not being cut that is serving our kids well um, I, ha I want to say I have never had anyone write to me about too many paras in a building that's not anything anyone has ever communicated to me um, <coughs> So I don't know if anyone can, can speak to that and reassure me, but I am hearing from people that, um, that there are much more significant cuts than it sounds like we're talking about. So it, it feels concerning to not feel like I have a good understanding of it all. And that doesn't mean I can't get there, but I'm not really there right now. And, um, you know, so, you know, we heard in the public budget hearing from one person with concerns, and then we got another email from a person with concerns. Um, and I, I don't, I don't know how to clarify it. So I don't know if anyone can help me clarify it. So when we looked at all of the schools and the classroom assistants, there were 14 in Berniston, I think 17 in Northfield, um, I think four maybe, and these include one-to-one -one paraprofessionals that are required by an IEP, but we're talking here about classroom assistance. We looked at the specific classes, how that would look next year. For example, we have certain students that are moving up to Pioneer that maybe have a, a you know, receive services in their class and we can service that person up here with their existing staff. Or we had other students that um, weren't going to require a one-to-one -one for whatever the reason there were retirements that happened and so we went through literally student by mm -hmm. student and class by class with the teachers and how that would look next year and and, and and took a lot of time looking at the specific situations in each building in each classroom and and that's what that's how we made the decisions is you know we didn't want to cut programming or teaching staff and work we'd look to make efficiencies that wouldn't 
you know, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's not ideal, mm -hmm. but I think we're in a situation where we have to be responsible as well. So we're meeting the needs of the students. And yep, yep. And, you know, this was all carefully thought about. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Robin? I just would echo what you said, Sue. I mean, there are <laughs> classes for whom having a, a second adult in the room is vital mm -hmm. to the functioning of the room. There are classes that do better without. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the teachers and the administrators who work with those kids every day, the they can that. tell you real quick on the back of an envelope which class is which. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> so John, you feel like you've had those conversations? Yeah. I yeah. Think, I, th yep. I think we've gone through this you know, extensively in very detail mm -hmm. to get to where we are now. Like I said, it's not ideal, but I think it's what's required and what, what can yeah. be covered. And the students are, you know, their services are going to be met yep. you know, with, with this, yep. what we're proposing. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we took a lot of time doing it, so. Yep. Okay. Sharon? I'd like to call a vote on this. <coughs> okay. Anybody else before we call the vote? Jess? So I have a not fully formed thought, but I wonder if there's... You gotta get really close to that, Mike. If there's um, any way that we can be thinking about um, how we assess the success of this over this year mm -hmm. um, and whether the needs are getting met in these mm -hmm. classrooms um, and if there's any, if we can be forward thinking about if we need to be shifting services around, how we're gonna be able to do that to support the kids and teachers if this doesn't seem like it's successful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think that's something we always have to do is reevaluate mm -hmm. and, and look at the needs. I mean, we have, may have students that move into the district that have certain needs or existing students and then we can be open mm -hmm. to reevaluating. But if we're looking at it now and we're trying to get to where we need to get mm -hmm. and we took all this, you know, what we couldn't, all this into consideration to have these discussions very carefully and then we can, we can reassess yeah. or reevaluate as things shift like we would anything else. Okay, I mean, it sounds like there's enough concern on this committee that it would be good to make sure we check, keep checking in about it. Okay, all right. So <coughs> again, I'm gonna say the number. This is the elementary instructional assistant line, 182,675 dollars. Um, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. <coughs> Thank you for that clarity, you guys. <coughs> um, elementary salaries. Uh, <coughs> the number for this line item is two million three hundred and eighty two thousand eighteen dollars do i have a motion second. that's a second from mike any discussion the summary of the increase in this particular line overall is salaries increasing for contractual obligations we are restoring the pe teacher at point four at nes they will no longer be sharing with the high school, nor will the elementary music be sharing staff with PVRS. Uh, Co-curricular stipend for an elementary program was moved to the elementary salaries um, to be in line with its category. And the substitutes by school were decreased and offset by a district-wide long-term substitute budget. And we are holding off on restoring an additional 0.5 full-time equivalent <coughs> tech integration specialist which is the um, administration change number that you see to the right. Discussion? Any more? <coughs> All right, let's call the vote. All those in favor of that number for this line, please raise your hand. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, I can't see everybody, so I'm asking each one. <laughs> All right. Um, <coughs> the next line is elementary supplies. The number is $74,525. Do I have a motion? Second. 
Discussion? Yeah, Jeannie. Jeannie yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, does that include the nurses' supplies, or is that under? I know that the, there was a separate line, a separate item, and I don't see nursing supplies listed. It's in elementary supplies. It is in elementary supplies. So the reason for the increase in this particular line item is the shared health supplies increase due to replacing expiring AEDs in each school. The textbook and library supply lines were restored that were previously cut. ELA supplies increased due to ELA curriculum updates needed and other supply lines <coughs> were decreased by principals based on the needs of each school. I have a question. Yeah. Um, are there the AEDs, is there one in each school or how do they go? Thank you, Sharon. And is this replaced? Okay, I'm just looking. No, you got I was just schedule. presented the schedule and um, two. Is there, this is this is no. batteries. Okay, these are down here. So all right. So my next question: Have they looked into a trade-in program? There is a trade-in program for AEDs. I'm just throwing it out there. I know there is not refurbishing. No, there is a, a trade-in program. Sharon? Um, this was presented um, several weeks ago, and it was researched by our nurse leader in the district. And this was her recommendation after speaking with the <coughs> representative from Zoll, who manufactures the AEDs. They did have an AED that malfunctioned last fall. So the representative came out and looked at all of them, and he said, Anything before 2005 needs to be replaced. Thank you. That's the safety of it. And we need, a new, we need new pads, we need new EpiPens, we need so many other things. So they put it on a kind of a rotating basis right. so the district didn't get hit all at once with these huge expenses. Thank you. Yep. Okay, are we ready for the vote? All right, all those in favor of that number for this line, please raise your hand. Okay, that was everybody, right? All right, facilities. The FY20 budget for facilities is $1,026,753. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Discussion. So the facilities decreased overall primarily due to the fact that we were able to capture a lower rate for our fuel this year of $1.93, which was previously $2.67. All of our light and power increased according to projections through Eversource and increasing energy rates. And we are, um, we have one retiring custodian here at PBRS. Robin. Was that electrical rate around six or seven percent? I think I heard at a previous meeting. It differed by school just because of demand rates and stuff. So the Eversource um, projections come directly from them based on kilowatt and prior demand uses. Um, I don't have an exact percentage per school calculated out, but it was expected to be around six percent. I don't think it was quite that high, but in addition to what they projected, their projections for this particular year from last year were under so I used a multiplier to increase that conservatively based on how much more energy we're using this year than they projected we were going to when they gave us projections last year and it totaled about six thousand dollars more than their projection across all four schools so they I used a multiplier to they they under projected last year so we're just trying to be on the safe side this correct. year correct by expecting exactly. a, a six percent And I know we have increase. green community projects and stuff that happen, but again, until we actually are seeing those savings, we can't budget for those kilowatt savings until we have those a year history on those. Maybe 2021. Yes. <laughs> Any more discussion? 
and facilities. Okay, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of that number for facilities, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions. All right. Insurance and benefits. The FY20 budget for insurance and benefits is $2,890,695. Do I have a motion? Discussion. So the insurance <coughs> rates for FY20 are staying the same for our Hampshire Trust. Our GIC is expected to increase 3%. Um, the increase in this particular line item is specific to the fact that we have a decrease in school choice revenue of $248,923 expected in FY20 versus what we captured in FY19, and that is what we use to offset our health insurance expense. And we also had an increased unemployment rate from 0.5 to 0.9 from 18 to 19. Okay, I'm going to call the vote on insurance and benefits. All those in favor of that number for that line? Okay, opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Professional development. The FY20 budget for professional development is $51,054. Do I have a motion? So moved. Right, discussion. <coughs> we reallocated professional development to be in line with its usage and purpose. Uh, principles, dues, and subscriptions were increased to be in compliance with contractual obligations, and we adjusted our district mentoring line to be in compliance with um, the needs of the teachers going into FY20. Yep. Okay, all those in favor of that number for that line, please raise your hand. Okay, opposed, <coughs> abstentions. Okay, PVRS admin line for FY20, <coughs> 171,997 dollars. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Discussion. This one's pretty simple. Um, there are salary increases due to contractual obligations for the administrative assistant, and currently there's a reduction of the dean of students' position in travel. <coughs> I just want to say I have a lot of concerns about cutting the dean of students' position. Um, since we've now had an announcement that our high school administrator is not going to continue with us after the end of the year. Um, that would be a, a continuity <coughs> in our building that I think would be helpful. And also we're moving the, potentially moving the sixth grade up to Pioneer and that will not be happening this coming year. It, it has to do with the district, the regional agreement. Well, the, the legislation supersedes the district agreement. Sue, so unfortunately, the legislation we found out today, it only supersedes 3B, but there are other parts of our regional agreement that state Pioneer Valley Regional School only houses grades 7 to 12, okay. so that particular section would have to be amended as well, and the legislation okay. does All not right. override that section. Okay. All right. So, um, anyway, I have concerns about that, cutting that position. Um, I'll second that. <coughs> yeah. Anyone else want to? Add any information to the thinking about that yet, Sharon? Uh, I have concerns about cutting that position as well, but I'm in hopes that um, this budget is, is certainly not um, something that we're going to have to live with for the rest of the year um, because there's going to be other decisions made after this budget is voted on, and then another step is taken um, to further <laughs> to further complicate the budget. And then I think we're going to have to even complicate it more on a third look at it. Okay. And to me, on that third tier, um, it, it could look as though we could put that back in mm -hmm. if we have to, because I, we really shouldn't be without that position. Mike. I agree with Sharon. Um, <clears throat> at this time, 
it makes sense to do this, but if moves happen, we have the opportunity to adjust and, and bring back staff mm -hmm. if see fit, mm -hmm. if the sixth grade does come up. Mm -hmm. But at this time, um, uh, with the budget the way it is, I think it's probably a, you know the best for us. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Any other discussion? <coughs> All right, I'm gonna call the vote. <coughs> All those in favor of that number for that line, please raise your hand. Okay, those opposed? Abstentions. <coughs> okay, PVRS salaries. The budget amount for FY20 is $1,764,243. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. The <clears throat> major decrease in this particular line item was because we moved those coaches over to the athletics budget. There are overall increases due to contractual obligations. There's a reduction of a one FTE special teacher and point FTE in the guidance counselor's line in this budget. Anybody else? Okay. All right, all those in favor of that number for the PBRS salaries line for FY20. Raise your hand. Okay, opposed? Abstentions. <coughs> All right. PBRS supplies. The PBRS supplies line for FY20 is $77,255. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. Um, that line essentially stayed almost the same. There were some decreases in textbooks due to a decrease in requests from teachers. In addition, we are restoring <coughs> library supplies with a small increase, decreasing <coughs> guidance textbook due, low, due to lower need for materials and moving to online resources, as well as um, budgeting for two Red Cat hearing systems and replacing two larger pieces of band equipment. Okay. Any more discussion on that line? I, does that include the um, AEDs for Pioneer? No. The, share, the shared health supplies line currently is in the elementary supplies. We may, when we, re, we, when we redo our chart of accounts and get more in line with DESI and UMIS reporting requirements, we can split that out. But currently, that is the category that it is in for voting transfers. And that's how the state has recommended that we keep our categories and vote our budget for this year. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor of that number for that line, please raise your hand. Okay, opposed? And abstentions. Okay, the sped line for FY20 currently at two million four hundred and forty four thousand three hundred and four dollars so moved second discussion <coughs> all right so again contractual obligation increases there were some tech items that were moved into the sped budget to be in line with their use and purpose um, the sped transportation increased slightly due to annual increases in expenditures and student needs Sped tuitions decreased overall due to two graduating students anticipated. The reductions <coughs> in sped for staffing at PVRS was 0.5 for a special needs teacher. ELL we reduced from one FTE to 0.3. Berninston instructional assistant for sped was reduced three FTE and one additional that was requested for next year for preschool is not being filled at this time because we don't know the specific needs of children coming in. PRES was a reduction of 0.5. NES also had a reduction of three, which is the same as Bernardston. Warwick was a reduction of one FTE, and this was due to a student moving out of the district in this year and not needing that aid for next year. And again, no, all special ed instructional assistant reductions were reviewed with the special ed director in line with student required services for FY20. Okay, any more discussion? All right, all those in favor of that number for the sped line for FY20, please raise your hand. Okay. 
Okay, opposed and abstentions. Okay, technology. The technology budget for FY20 is currently 402941. So moved. Second. Discussion. <coughs> This particular line had an overall increase due to m the technology hardware lines increasing. This is to serve the purpose of moving towards a one-to-one -one student device initiative, replacing aging teacher devices and other hardware. This is going to be done through a three-year implementation plan across a district and working towards creating technology replacements as part of our operating budget rather than capital expenditures and assessments. We also s captured some savings by switching vendors for our copiers when the <coughs> contracts <Sorry>. expired. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I had silenced it. It's a media silence. Okay. So where were we? Technology. All right. All those in favor of that number for that line, please raise your hand. Opposed and abstentions. Okay. Transportation. The transportation number for FY20 is seven hundred and eighty-eight thousand one hundred and forty dollars. <coughs> okay, discussion. The increase in this particular line is simply due to an increase in our rate with Cosmescus from three hundred and fifty-three dollars a day to three hundred and ninety-three per our new five year contract that was awarded to them, signed by the school committee, and approved by the commissioner of ed. Okay, all those in favor of that number for this line, please raise your hand. Opposed? And abstentions. Okay, tuition. The tuition budget number for FY20 is $832,764. Second. <coughs> Discussion. This particular line comes directly from the governor's FY 2020 um, first round budget, and we are obligated to vote to this level. Um, my estimate for this particular line is roughly $803,000 based on graduating students and students that would be <coughs> leaving, but again, we have to vote to the governor's budget. Okay. Based, and this is it's based on current year enrollment that yep. they get that October 1. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, um, <coughs> all those in favor of that number for that line, please raise your hand. But we're going to give the state the side eye. What? I said, but we're going to give the state the side eye. Yeah, really. Okay, any opposed? And abstentions? Okay. <coughs> and Tanya, you want a total as well? Yeah. We don't need to vote yeah, on it. We don't need to if we've done each category. I don't think you need it. You just need to vote by category. You can state that the budget's okay. passed. Let's be done. Budget. All right. <coughs> Thank you, everyone. We also do need to vote the capital expenditure for Pioneer as well. <coughs> in your assessments packet for the $32,000 to the towns and that was in the PowerPoint packet that everyone was given. Yeah. It's $8,000 for carpet and $24,000 for the Wi-Fi project here at the high school. on the very last page of the PowerPoint, <coughs> PBRS capital projects. So three separate numbers will vote, the 8,000, the 24. It's just eight. Oh, that, yeah, the eight. I don't know how it's typically voted. I would just vote This is the just a description, right? Yeah, I would yeah. just vote the total of the 32,000. Okay. Is everybody clear on what we're voting on? So it's the last page on the PowerPoint. <coughs> Carpeting three rooms at 8,000 and Wi-Fi infrastructure update at 24,000. Yep, got it. Carpet. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, the PBRS capital projects amount for FY20 is $32,000. 
Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor, well, discussion. Okay, <laughs> all those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay. That was unanimous. <coughs> okay, thank you, Tanya and John and the administrators and everyone that worked on that budget. Okay, so now we have um, item number four, vote on the assessments to the towns. So on page two of the packet that we got tonight, right? Yep. That's the assessments. Mm -hmm. And the capital assessment okay. packet also. So, um, Tanya, I've never done this before, so you're going to have to help me out That's here. That's okay. Neither have I. So <laughs> <laughs> um, this particular sheet that you have in front of you shows what the minimum contribution is that is gi actually given to us by the state mm -hmm. as well as their percentage of their above minimum contribution share as well as their transportation that is split out there is on the well there was on the back side of that um, the five-year rolling average enrollment that these percentages were calculated on and that was also passed out at the um, the last meeting and some of the ones prior That's to that. This one, right? Correct. So this one has the enrollment numbers. Yep. So that's in the other packet. Yep. Um, so essentially what is done is there's a five year rolling average of the students that are in the district currently and that's how the percentages are calculated for the above minimum contribution. I did put on this sheet because I almost um, to just kind of enforce the idea with this new <coughs> regional agreement that's going to be proposed tonight of moving to the foundation enrollment because you can see if you look the third line down at the top under minimum contribution our foundation enrollment percentages um, for some of our towns are quite different than the town share based on the kids that are actually in the district and that has to do with the fact that we have kids that are chartering out and choicing out that these the towns aren't necessarily paying for through their above minimum contribution um, assessment mm -hmm. so that will just get those things more in line mm -hmm. th in the down the road for now but fy 20s assessment um, is at the bottom for each mm -hmm. of the towns and it totals nine million three hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred and ten dollars which is a 1.65 percent increase over last year for a total increase to all four towns of $151,735. So do we vote each town's amount or just those totals you just cited? I believe it's just the total just assessment the total? to the town and then you'll need to vote the, um, the 32, well you already voted the 32,000 capital, but just accept the calculations that were done I would think on the percentages. Okay. Do I make the motion or does someone else make the motion? Okay. I'll make the motion. Okay, go for it. I'll make the motion <coughs> that we accept the nine million three hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred and ten dollars. Second. <coughs> Discussion. Can I just ask about the language of that? I'm trying yep. to recall whether we make the motion to accept the nine million or or request the nine million, et cetera. Request. I think it's a vote assessment. to assess the nine million three hundred fifty-seven thousand five hundred ten dollars to the four-member towns of the regional district. So not not ex not accept the amount, but assess the amount. Request the assessed amount. Yes. Request the assessed amount. Or approve the assessment. I'm just saying if we if we all vote yeah. to accept it. <laughs> That's not what we need to do. Yeah. And do you want to read I the motion for us? Uh, well, I'll show <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Motion, okay. I have it to accept the assessments that calculate. So we want to say request the assessments as calculated instead of accept. Right. Yep. Another one. Well, uh, it <laughs> seems like a good point. Or Thank you, maybe we make the motion to vote to assess the four-member towns the nine million 
$357,510. I think that language So instead of request, online. assess, vote to assess. So, and she's working on it. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Vote to assess the town. Mm hmm. Nine three five seven five ten. Yep. Okay. <coughs> and then the same with the capital. We voted capital already. You have to vote the assessment, though. It's a separate assessment. So oh. the town, they put it on their annual town meeting warrant as a separate article. So you have to vote both of them. The calculation. All right. So we have a motion for the total <coughs> assessment. Let's uh, see if, yeah, for uh, there's any discussion mike seconded okay okay all those in favor please raise your hand opposed abstentions okay so i don't have that paper you have in your hand should, should you want me should to look have at it this packet with your <coughs> school committee packet oh, i do right have there, it yeah. yep so this is the calculation. The capital is assessed differently than the operating. In our current regional agreement, and I attached the language to the back of it, um, half of the assessment is based on their equalized value and the other half is based on their enrollment. So you'll see the calculations done on the front here based on the most current equalized value from this <coughs> DLS. Um, multiplied by half so their 50% comes from there so and then their enrollment was also calculated as a percentage and mm -hmm. added together to get the 100% of each town's capital assessment percentage for FY20 and then allocated to the 32,000 okay so does everybody understand how that capital assessment is broken out okay so we are we are actually voting to accept the breakout of this assessment it would vote to assess the $32,000 to the towns per the calculation, just like you did the operating. Okay. Should, should I read the numbers in, into the record? I would just say $32,000 assessment for the year <coughs> capital to the towns. To be broken out per the regional year. To be broken out. Do you want me to move that? Or to accept yeah. the calculation, however you want to do that. I move that we assess the town $32,000 for capital projects at PVRS to be broken out per the regional agreement. Second. <laughs> Discussion? <coughs> all right, all those in favor? Any opposed or abstentions? Okay. <coughs> okay, the next item is number five, field trip to New York City and Boston for exchange students and host students. Sure, come on down. This is the no, no. Can go by the same case? No. <coughs> Hi. Hi. My name is Emily Dean, and um, most of you remember me from being that teacher that went on sabbatical. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> One of my promises was I will create numerous opportunities for international exchange of teachers and students. So I've delivered on part of that so far. We just came back from the trip to Spain. Um, we spent eight hundred and fifty dollars each. Really nice trip for 10 days in Spain wow. and stayed wow. with families, uh, did a number of excursions to Valencia, Alicante, and Barcelona and Madrid. And now those students and uh, host teachers are going to be picked up by me tomorrow. <laughs> and <laughs> they'll be here for 10 days. Mm -hmm. So um, we are planning numerous activities, um, maple sugaring locally and going up to Mount Snow. But we also have a trip to Boston um, for their departure and New York City this coming weekend. So it's part of our uh, contract that we have to get school board approval mm -hmm. for any overnight excursions. So I'm here to ask for your permission to take 20 
lovely children to <laughs> Boston and New York. <laughs> so can you just give us a little insight into how it's all structured and the sure. you know, monitored and all that? Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. we are leaving from the school on Saturday morning, driving down to uh, New Haven and hopping on a train there. We'll be staying at a hostel in New York City. It's um, a really nice hostel, uh, 34th Street um, Central Park. So it's, I think we have two 10 room dorms that are just us and then one six room for the uh, teachers basically and two of the students. And then uh, we'll be going to Times Square, Central Park, um, Staten Island Ferry uh, just trying to keep the cost low, but mm -hmm. get the kids. A, a ch Some of our students haven't been to New York, so mm -hmm. for all of our kids, it'll be a really great experience. Mm -hmm. Sharon? I, uh, usually we get some kind of an itinerary or a little bit sooner. Um, Sorry. Well, I I'd like to see you do that too for us before we just shoot something out. Like absolutely. To all of us so that we have an idea of where you all are, where you're going, where you've been. I honestly did not want to go to New York. Um, I wanted to go to the hockey games <laughs> and some of the other things that are happening locally, but... Um, I think New York's a good choice. It's going to be a great choice. It's yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, I would just mm -hmm. like to know where they are. And okay. I'm more, I'm more than happy to do that. I actually have it all in an itinerary mm -hmm. that I just sent to the teacher there, so... Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. If you sent it to the teacher there, it's probably in Spanish. Could you send it to us in English? Please? Yeah, I promise I will send it in <laughs> English. You. Yeah, no problem at all. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was understood. Any other questions? Well, I wanted to make things a little bit lighter. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <coughs> will you report out on it after you get back? Absolutely. That'd be yeah. great. Yeah. Or and you can send us some pictures. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> you'll see, actually, uh, as of tomorrow, there's going to be a bulletin board out in the main lobby welcome, welcoming this group of kids coming and a bunch of the pictures from the trip we just took. So, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. How many Thank students you. do you have coming in exchange so and, and mm -hmm. for how long will they be here? Mm -hmm. There's 12 students and two teachers, and they'll be here from March 7th until the 17th. Sharon, did you want to mention that? nice presentation when you get back would be great uh sounds good to me yeah. actually i would rather the students yeah, come and present students because to present. they're the ones yeah. that are really excited yeah. about it yeah <laughs> sounds wonderful i'm tired they're okay. excited <laughs> all right all those in favor of supporting Wait, we haven't got field. a motion oh sorry but i will oh. move that the school committee approve the trip i'll second it all those in favor of the field trip to new york and boston for the group from spain and pioneer Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much yeah. for your support. And um, just for future, <coughs> like my department is going to keep growing, I think, because I'm going to keep having more and more programs like this. So I'm hoping that you'll keep looking at maybe replacing that Spanish teacher that was cut. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. So okay. next regular pioneer meeting is Thursday March 14th seven o'clock in the library mm -hmm. and do I have a motion to adjourn so moved oh. all those in favor okay thanks everyone for helping us get this done on time <coughs>